You may have seen Star Parker on television, but we're going to tell you her story. From tragedy to triumph, a reckless life, aborting her children, potentially robbing stores. But guess what? In the business mountain, while she was at work, God got her number. As a matter of fact, check it out. Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Now listen, Star Parker, you see Star Parker out there all the time. She's on, she's a news commentator that comes and speaks and shares. But you know, her story really is our story. Mm. And maybe this is your story. And, you, and I want you to hear her story. It's a powerful one. She testifies before Congress, you know, about what's happening with, uh, with the, the taking the lives of children. She testifies in, uh, you know, a biblical worldview and different things. It's just a powerful thing. But you know what? It didn't start out that way. Mm. As a matter of fact, I want you to hear this is Star Parker's personal life story and it might be yours. I know that it's ours. Check it out. I was out of control. I just was doing whatever came. And my kid at that point was a few years old, and I mean, I was barely taking care of her. Star Parker's reckless search for happiness would bring her to a breaking point and would dramatically change her. Star Parker entered her teen years in an America reeling from the racial turmoil and sexual upheaval of the late 60s. Her love for excitement and risk easily led to a lifestyle of reckless decisions. I love life and I like freedom. I would go to school all day and then sneak out at night and we would go break and enter people's homes and we would go get in a lot of fights. Finally, it escalated to one of my really close associates at that time I wanted to rob a store. He's like, run, run, and the store owner, you know, started yelling and screaming. That's when I first thought, wow, there's something wrong with what we're doing, and we could actually end up dead. And so that's when I started running, and it was my first experience with feeling that I am really going down a path of no return. I'd hang out at Venice Beach, I'd hang out in clubs and take a lot of drugs, and I kept getting pregnant, and then I would just have abortion, and then I'd get pregnant again. It was just like, this is, you know, crazy living. I didn't like the decisions I was making, but I didn't have any control over them, I felt. I just was doing whatever came. After four abortions, Starr decided to keep her next child. As a pregnant mom on welfare, she began to look for extra income. I went into an advertising agency looking for money under the table. This particular agency was being run by three men, uh, good-looking men, I might add, and I thought, oh, I could work here. This would be great <laughs> because I was a party girl. Um, and that's when they confronted me. They said they didn't pay under the table. They were legitimate businessmen. <laughs> I'll never forget. I was very confronted to them, they were confronted back to me, and they finally told me my lifestyle was unacceptable. I couldn't work there, and I was really upset at this point. And so I asked them, unacceptable to who? And they said it was unacceptable to God. And I just stopped, I, did, I didn't know what to say. Up until that point, I never really thought about God, and I never really thought about God thinking about me. When Starr ended up alone in the hospital with an emergency C-section, she received an unexpected visitor. Ken, who I'd met at the advertising agency, who had called me a couple of times during my pregnancy to let me know that, you know, they were thinking about me, he came to the hospital. And I don't even know how he knew that I was at the hospital. And he's telling me that, you know, God loved me and and I told him that, um, you know, I, I don't know why I couldn't love myself. And he left, and I left. I went home, and I didn't change anything. I just kept partying and kept, kept on welfare. And he kept calling. And then finally, I just went to church with him. I thought maybe what he was saying was true. Maybe God did love me. It seemed peaceful. It seemed um, controlled. I was out of control. And I never thought I wanted control. But when I saw that, I wanted it. 
I knew I'd sinned, but I think when it became crystal clear that I needed Christ, I had to be forgiven of something really deep was when abortion was mentioned, because now we're talking the taking of a life. And that's when I realized that I really did need to be saved, because not just saved from, you know, hell. I needed to be saved from myself. Star surrendered her life to Jesus Christ, and the difference in her quickly became evident. Every time we would go to the Bible study or go to the church, he would bring forth a message from the scripture. There was something in there that would convict me somewhere else that maybe I thought or didn't think about at all. Before I was out of control sexually, because I had no reason to say no. Now I have reason to say no, because the scripture says say no. I was still living on welfare, and that was just how I lived. And one day the preacher said, what are you doing living on welfare? I thought, what? How does he know I live on welfare? <laughs> he said, the government is not your source. Turn in your Bible. And he had us turn. Sure enough, it said, and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I wrote my caseworker and told her to take my name off. God delivered me. He just really, really has recovered my life that I'm confident in that if he could, would do it for me, he could do it for somebody else. You know, it's not just something that somebody told me and I'm kind of making it up as I go along. I can be confident in something that is eternal. His hand is a loving hand and I just owe my life to him. So awesome. That's wow. Star Parker. You'll see her on Fox News and different places yeah. talking, and uh, she has her own channel, as a matter of fact, and we'll make that related to you. But in Star Parker, really, I mean, that could be, you know, a, I could relate to that oh, story. Yes. And uh, others I know that can relate to that story. And uh, Pat Hamilton can really relate to that story, <laughs> <laughs> right? No, seriously. And, you know, we want to hear about your story. Yeah. You know, everybody is told, that was if you heard that, that's Pat Hamilton Thank say, you, saying amen <laughs> and pray. And so that we want to hear your story, you know, share in the community. You see right here how to, how to, to do that, you know, down below. There's the details of how to do that. You can just post it down below or call us or email us. But what's your, your the most powerful thing about you is, mm. first of all, that God created you. He had a plan for you. And what's your story? How did... How you know, everybody has a story, mm -hmm. right? And we shared ours at meetmyfather.org. We didn't share it all. Well, she did an excellent job. We didn't have enough it. time to share it all, uh, but, no. but we shared some. We shared yeah. some. And you know, God didn't come to make bad people good. He came to make dead people alive. Mm. And that's so important because so many people are thinking, like Star did, that yeah. you know, God doesn't know I exist. Well, He created you. Yeah, He knows. And the enemy says that God doesn't love you. Of course he loves you so much that He gave His own Son to die for you. So all those things that do disqualify us, can be done away with. God can forgive us mm -hmm. of that. And uh, go to meetmyfather.org and just read up a little bit on us, just like you heard on Star. But share yours. We want to hear your stories. Matter of fact, post it below, call us, email it. We want to hear about your story, right? Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. I'm your host, Greg Lancaster, and we're so glad that you've joined us. Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com. I've enjoyed our time together. God bless.